Let's we'll start, though, with the latest snapshot of the economy. The quarterly growth figures come out every three months. And have a look at them. They show that for the March quarter, the first three months of the year, economic growth came in at 0.4 of 1%. Now, that is a little better, 0.2 of a percent better than the December quarter. But the annual rate, as you can see there, 1.8%, is actually not up. It's down 0.5 of a percent, down from 2.3% was the annual result last time. And that 1.8% figure is the lowest annual growth rate we've seen in a decade. Now, breaking that down, what's actually driving the growth that is there in the March quarter? It's 0.2 of that, so half of it comes from additional government expenditure. The other half from a pretty good export performance. Our trade figures have been pretty good, so that's helping as well. But bear in mind, 1.8% annual growth. How does that compare to what the budget suggests we'll get? Well, here was the pre-election budget update from Treasury, showing that for the current financial year we're in, 2018-19, the growth rate should be 2.25%. It's 1.8% at the moment. For the coming financial year, 2019-20, even higher, 2.75%. So it's going to have to pick up quite a bit for that budget projection to be met. Now, will that happen? The Treasurer, Josh Frydenberg, today was emphasising what the government is doing on tax cuts, on infrastructure, on helping business. Have a look. So we believe we've got the right measures and the right plan to strengthen the economy, to continue the strong jobs growth. And I do want to underline the fact that the labour market is strong. So we do face some headwinds, domestic and international, but we have got the economic plan. It was laid out in the budget and we'll continue to implement it. Now, the Reserve Bank Governor has been quite clear more is needed. In fact, just yesterday, in cutting rates to historic low levels, the official cash rate, that is, Glenn Stevens, the Reserve Bank Governor, made it clear that Structural reforms are needed. What are structural reforms? Things like industrial relations reforms, tax reforms, maybe even the energy market reforms. You heard there the Treasurer satisfied that what the government took to the election will do the job. What about Labor? Well, it didn't exactly have a stronger growth story at the election either. Now, once again, in opposition, the Shadow Treasurer, the new Shadow Treasurer, Jim Chalmers, can focus on the government's record. This is another quarter of feeble economic growth and it's another hammer blow to this government's economic credibility. Under the Liberals, the economy is floundering and middle Australia is struggling. We're going to be talking to the Shadow Treasurer Jim Chalmers shortly on the program. Stay with us for that. What is the plan to actually drive some growth? All right, well, time now to take a look at what's been uh, going on in business and get some reaction and fallout to this uh, growth figure today. Our business editor, Tiki Fullerton, joins us now. Tiki, very good afternoon to you. It's, look, I guess not that uh, surprising, not that unexpected. It's a little lower than what the market was expecting, but what's, right. been the, uh, what's been the reaction to the figure today? Look, I think uh, the, the, the market uh, initially actually uh, 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 rose on the back of uh, strong numbers on Wall Street, but it's been really falling away uh, through most of the day and, uh, and has ended up uh, just, a, just, a, just a little bit up. But really, the reaction has been, um, well, it's slightly uh, more feeble, to use Jim Chalmers' words, than expected. But it was pretty much expected, this number, and uh, the yearly number, as you say, the lowest uh, growth since since uh, since the GFC so quite depressing news at one level but I think given the quarter that we have actually had if you think back to the expectations the uncertainty going around uh, that the election uh, d d d delivered uh, you know I think there's a lot to be said for looking forward we've got certainty about government we've got some of these uh, tax cuts coming through now we've got this minimum minimum wage uh, through uh, as well. Uh, we've got APRA probably opening up in terms of the serviceability on mortgages. Uh, I mean, this was the uh, interesting thing, wasn't it, uh, looking at these numbers, that actually the spending, the consumer spending, well, people I was were say saving I mean, rather this, than this spending. Is, and it's a good point because this is the first three months of the year, pre-election, where there was a strong expectation Labor would win. Mm. Uh, and clearly, households were... Tightening the belt. We see that in today's numbers. Uh, household mm. consumption spending was the big fall. 
Yes, and, and it's a good question, I think, for Jim Chalmers, who's obviously taking every opportunity to hit the government mm. over the head with these low numbers. But actually, uh, part of it, you could home back to this uncertainty, this worry about franking credits or worry about negative gearing changes that might have hammered the property market as well. And, uh, and question, will it actually make a difference, this 25-point uh, cut that Philip Lowe has done. He's actually said uh, in his overnight speech that uh, possible further cut is certainly not off the table as well. So this combination well, yeah, and, and, of changes... And, and Tiki's not only saying that. He's, you know, going further than I can recall Reserve Bank governors going in urging the government to do more, to do more on structural reform. Well, he is indeed, and uh, certainly if you see Jennifer Westacott's um, uh, flyer today, uh, pushing very hard at that, and not just, not just in infrastructure, but also in terms of training and making sure we get our productivity up and the, the right skills for the, for the country. These are really sort of, in some ways, very woolly to talk about, but actually making sure that we've got the right skills to match the labour force that is needed and, and get some traction there. But the reforms that you're talking about in terms of IR, they're very difficult, aren't they? We'll see what Christian Porter does well, there. And, and, and look, the Prime Minister's kind of boxed himself in through the campaign on that and a few other things. They're not going to cut company taxes. They're not going to go for Correct. major industrial relations reform. Correct. And I think taxes is... Um, I mean, it's a huge issue because so much is now off the table in terms of a sort of Ken Henry type reform. You, you've got uh, not just negative gearing off, you've got GST off really, you've got uh, um, all sorts of um, all sorts of different bits of the tax thing which should be taken all together and looked at in total. I mean we're a long way from doing anything on those grounds and then as you say energy and emissions policy, we are well boxed in with this government given recent comments. Yeah, they're not, uh, they're not about the shift course on that now. Tiki, the um, Interest rates yesterday, as we yes. saw, two of the big banks passed it on in full, two didn't. Um, what's been the fallout from that today? Look, I think, uh, uh, well, again, Jim Chalmers has, has taken the opportunity to, uh, to, to bash the Treasurer for being uh, totally pathetic with the banks and not listened to at all. But I think there were different things going on strategically among those big four banks. Uh, Matt Common uh, at Commonwealth Bank, he just made his big speech to markets. It was all about regaining trust and the customer and, and everything else. So passing that on, being seen to pass that on straight away was all part of his strategy. ANZ, Shane Elliott... David Gonski as chair, they had different issues and they actually mentioned today that it wasn't just about depositors, which is the other side of this coin, you know, uh, but, but it was also about market conditions out there and the bank performance. And they have actually struggled with uh, their share of the, of the mortgage market and they, they're having to make some very difficult decisions to balance profits, shareholders with customers. So I think uh, banks are, are, are being quite strategic. Uh, Westpac as well, uh, almost rather confusing for, 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 for some people, perhaps, uh, dropped, uh, dropped by 20 points, uh, but 35 points for interest-only loans. So they did something mm. different again. Yeah, well, swings and roundabouts, I guess. Look, Tiggy, thanks so much for that big week on the economy. Appreciate it.